The Maori. Oh, those guys always normally play really well. They have cities absolutely everywhere. Okay, for a Crusade victory, Oligarchy is important at some point because you need that plus four combat strength. But Classical Republic is more important generally because the housing and the immunity means you've got a better empire. Only switch, if, if, if you take my advice, only switch to Oligarchy just as you're about to go to war and you need the combat strength. Classical Republic is better to be on for most of the game up till that point. Now I've got loads and loads and loads of faith coming in, that's wonderful. Um, settlers we don't need to particularly worry about at the moment, but builders I'm getting a lot of. We want to be getting a Gogi, because I've got lots of archers and swordsmen to build, that's fine. Urban planning is good, but actually Holy Sight works better than urban planning. And let's go for the Diplomatic League so that we can make loads of friends with city-states that we haven't met yet. Because at the moment, Kehokia is locked down pretty tight. Um, although actually we've just lost their grip on that. That was really funny because they had actually levied all of the units and I've just ruined that for them. So I actually feel quite quite funny about that. That's, that's good. Um, you can see, look at this, St. Petersburg is now... Oh, it's looking pretty good. 32 production at turn 93. That's not a bad little combo, that, is it? Oh, look, keep is doing what I do. The Great Admiral Shuffle. Ah, oh, they copied me. So Maori have got a lot of cities. A lot of cities. We're going to send them a delegation and see if we can make friends with them. Yeah, perfect. That's one less person to worry about at the beginning of the game. Friendships are no things to be sniffed at. But their religion, they have a religion. And there's only one city that follow it, which is brilliant. That will be really quickly intercepted once we can get to it. Right, irrigation, one turn. Ha! Love it. Just watch this. We're in 12th on science at the moment, but we're about to catch up massively because we've missed out on loads of easy, like, one-turn techs, like sailing. It's just like, done. Love it. And then uh, writing, one turn again. Brilliant. I'm even now getting rid of marshes just to improve, uh, to put farms on because farms give obviously uh, housing, whereas everything else doesn't. St. Petersburg, look, just keep doing builders. I know you've got 37 production, but the city's not big enough yet. We could get, we're going to get St. Petersburg to like 15 pop. It's got 17 housing. It can do it. There's no reason why it shouldn't be that size. Cahokia, just going to use that basically to discover Vilnius either side of it. Where, who, who's that? The Congo. Oh, the Congo is even better. I mean, that's brilliant. The Congo don't they can't make a religion, so there's absolutely no chance that they're going to be able to resist what I'm about to do. So we made friends with the Congo as well. So basically, Norway are the only people who want to dislike us in this game at the moment. It's fine. We don't mind that at all. Uh, okay, right. Builders, literally, builders are the only thing that I'm getting at the moment. I've got a lot of improvements to make. I've got amenities that I can be uh, stealing. Who's working this tile? It is Moscow. All right, Moscow is about to get a bit of an infusion of food. Building lumber mills everywhere. This is the thing. You just need to make sure that every single one of your tiles is being worked. I mean, look. Look at St. Petersburg. If I just show you what it's working. Every single one of these tiles now is improved. It is wonderful. 37 production per turn. So one thing I totally forgot to do was as soon as we had temples, really, we should have been buying apostles. Luckily, I had a thousand faith. So let's just quickly get those in and we'll um, spread our religion or improve it. Uh, let's see what is still available to us. I'm hoping lots of stuff. Evangelize belief. Evangelize belief. Okay, so first of all, um, we need a religious building. Cathedrals are really good if you've got lots of religious art, but we're not relying on a culture game, so that's not a huge thing. Stupas are rubbish. Uh, Dahomirs are pretty bad as well. Um, Gerda was a really fantastic. That extra plus two food and plus one housing is a really good stack on top of Feed the World. It means you're going to get crazy big cities. Mosque is also fantastic because it's missionaries plus one spread. Um, means that you can be crusading better, but you shouldn't actually be taking missionaries on a crusade. You should really do it with apostles. So I'm going to go with Gerdawa. Pagoda is good for a peaceful game, but if we're not going to have any diplomatic favor by the time we're done. So Gerdawa is there. Um, tithe, or teeth as I like to call it, is something that we really, really should be getting because that gold per turn basically will fund our entire army. Pilgrimage is good, don't get me wrong. But teeth, 
That's what we need. Oh, Crusading Cow. It fills all of the books. It's a wonderful thing. And religion's already getting us 27 gold per turn. That is delightful. Actually, how come City State hasn't been converted yet? It's terrible, that. That Gerdua is immediately being put in. Lovely. It just keeps our cities growing nice and quickly. Right. I think this is satisfying, right? I'm going to put an encampment here. And it just blocks the land bridge into my capital. Try and get in if you if you think you're hard enough. Come on. I could even put down the odd Cahokia mound on these really rubbish flatland tundra tiles. It's not bad at all. A bit of extra gold. I'm not entirely sure I should be working over other stuff, but I think at the moment St. Petersburg has got a good set of things that it's working. As soon as the encampment is done, I'm going to get the barracks in. We've got a gogi ready to rock. Um, we're going to be building an army and we're going to be charging after Norway. I don't have any commercial hubs or harbours, so this free inquiry, my golden age won't do very much. Pembrush and Voice would give me a lot of extra culture from all of the lava districts I've got down. But monumentality, plus the movement for builders, being able to purchase them with faith is amazing. Exodius, Exodius of the Evangelists, though, means that I could get my missionaries out with huge amounts of charge and I could spread them around to places like the Congo to set myself up for later. I mean, realistically, there's not too many places I'm going to be able to settle. And quite frankly, we're not after a settling game. We're going to take all this stuff over with an aggressive crusade. So Exodius of the Evangelists is better than monumentality, especially if I actually remember to buy missionaries, which I should be able to do because I'm not that bad at the game, I promise. Cough. Never forget apprenticeship. That plus one to the mine improvement makes a big difference. And we want to be getting industrial zones out absolutely everywhere. They are the best um, district by far. Keep the trade route short. It means uh, time to complete this trade route. 40 turns? Oh, fine. Do that one then. God, that's a huge trade route connoisseur there's the culture per turn lovely okay that's a huge beast that's like 10 to 12 per turn for st petersburg just to have that that's really really good always go for city center on the urban development treaty because it's always what people go for and then sovereignty uh we have a uh, trade city state near us so we'll vote for that just in the hope that we can send a route to it religious one city center okay so we got one point out of that it's not the worst I'm going to go for barracks at the moment because I think archers and swordsmen are going to give me more joy uh, than going for anything else. I think normally the um, Statue of Zeus has gone by now. It's a really popular one, that one. Um, people just jump on it. The computer loves it. Oh no, Statue of Zeus is up there, isn't it? Uh, maybe I could try and go for it. Three archers, three spearmen in the battering ram is pretty damn good. But flat land with an adjacent encampment, mm, I could build one, in theory. I don't know if it's cost effective though. Now I'm even building a lava here. It's got no adjacency at all, so it's not going to give me any faith, but it's feed the world is what I'm after. That's what makes it good. All right, all right, all right, I'm getting there. Crusade's on the way, don't you worry. So apprenticeship means that hopefully my mines, yeah, they've got loads and loads of production. Now that is lovely uh the barracks has completed statue of zeus in nine turns is that it i guess i have got 43 production that's nuts all right well in that case um let's go instead of the gogi then let's get ourselves um corvée classical wonders let's do that statue of zeus build it eight turns in fact we can get the hanging gardens in four turns if we wanted to that's nuts once you've reached this sort of point in apprenticeship, I think knights are a good way to go, but gunpowder is also a really good way to go. But you need to know if you've got nitre. Armories are a good building to pick up because of the production bonus, but nitre is really, really important. Build an aqueduct. Have I not built an aqueduct? Is that not something I've done? Let's just do that in Moscow quickly. Um, and then I can boost that one. Again, we are boosting where we can. Defensive tactics is a good thing if you don't have that boost because it means nobody's declared war on you. Um, oh look, Catholicism. Who's been spreading Catholicism? We don't know. We have no idea, but our missionaries are going to give it a good go. The reason I am using missionaries at the moment is because we actually don't have um, anyone attacking us. So I've got freedom to move these guys around and be really happy with them. Um, otherwise, you'd want to stick with apostles where you could. 
because they can resist a bit of attack. Um, these guys are a bit easier to do. There we go. He's a happy boy. Starting to spread the crusading cow around. Hungry. Is it hungry spreading the religion around? Oh, they're normally pretty... Yes, it is. Hungry are normally pretty tough, to be fair. But they're doing all right. Again, we want to see if we can make friends with them uh, pretty quickly. The open border should be a pretty easy trade. Let's do a luxury trade on top of that. Um, wonderful. That's a great little trade, that one. Uh, I'm almost out of iron, actually. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly get myself a swordsman. Lovely. That'll do. There you go. I was just worried I was going to hit the iron limit and lose the benefit of having it. Once Pingala has Librarian, Connoisseur and Researcher, I'd recommend going Victor on the next one. Redoubt is really good to defend a newly conquered city and Garrison Commander and that plus four loyalty per turn towards all other cities within nine tiles means that if you take over a city and stick Victor in, he is absolutely brilliant at keeping those cities on side. Loyalty is not so much of an issue if you've got him defending the keeps for you pretty good three turns off the statue of zeus even if we don't get it we're gonna have a huge boost um towards getting an armory down which would be a pretty good result as well vilnius is now a crusading cow of course it is it's a beautiful religion um and then we're going to go and start spreading it over here as well we've got another missionary on the way i'm just using all my faith at the moment to get the missionaries on the way oh feudalism How have i not got feudalism god I'm just racing through this, this stage of the game. How are we doing on terms of science? I'm still in last. How is that possible? Mara, I've only got 22 there and I'm on 18. So quite frankly, that's not too bad. This is becoming quite a neat little city, actually. Um, I mean, look, this is why I absolutely love it when you get uh, Urban Development Treaty, 100% production towards city centre buildings. It is brilliant. It's like, have a granary, have a monument, have a war. Just, just have it all in eight turns. Lovely. Anyone else can trade any resources? I've got a lot of resources. I've spread quite nicely, actually. No, nobody's got anything. It's a shame. Oh, the Congo started right next to the Matterhorn. Oh, that's the irony start of the, uh, of the game so far. It's like, here we go. Here's the thing that boosts your ability to get a religion going quickly. Oh, you've a Congo. Oh, well, that's a shame, isn't it? Statue of Zeus. Oh, yeah. You see, look, this is all possible purely because of the insane production I've got on my city. 46.2 is what I've got going in that city at the moment. That is officially nuts. That's really, really, really good. What I'm going to do is I'm also going to get the government plaza in quickly so that I can get the warlord's um, room, which gives me the 20% bonus when I take over a city. Um, the government plaza, it could be built somewhere with a better adjacency, but I'd rather use it on a snow tile. Plus, there's a good old campus tile here if I do need it. So. That's not too bad. Have a lava down over here as well. Look at that. I've only got four cities, but it's a magnificent empire going on. Oh, wow. That is a lot, a lot in one encampment. Okay, right. You all need to just separate out a little bit. Thank you very much. Well, with all of these troops, looks like I need a couple of upgrades for them. So there's the pikeman um, and there is the crossbow. So let's get the crossbows going first. Uh, did we have any niter? I didn't actually check. Oh no, there's loads of niter up there. Okay, so I can already see that we do have niter. Um, five results. Any in the... No, it's going to be all under Congo, isn't it? Uh, yeah, okay, so but I've got two. That is a ridiculously good start for me. Normally I don't have any of the stuff, so that is pretty handy. Okay, served him in, feudal contract in. We're not building any wonders. I don't plan on building any more wonders. We can take them over. That's the thing. Although, still, the Hanging Gardens are still here for four, four turns. They're all pretty good tiles, there's the problem, so I don't need it. I've got plenty of housing in that city. It's, it's not a problem. Have I got any decent industrial zone tiles, actually? Let's have a look at this. Uh, not really. Actually, that could be a lot better. Civil service is a very important thing to do, because you need a military alliance before you go to war. Otherwise, you're leaving a plus five bonus on the table if you're both at war with somebody. Combined with Crusade, that plus five bonus, plus 15. I mean, really? Do you want to leave that? I mean, I'm going to take it. Uh, Warlord's Throne, plus 20% production in all cities once you take over an enemy city. I tell you, it's really, really good. There's Garrison Commander, by the way. So who do we want to make an alliance with? I think the Congo would be quite good. They don't have much army, though. Um, 
coupe would be good because I'm, I don't know where coupe is. So let's go for you. Military alliance. They don't like Norway. This is all a pretty good sign, to be fair, that they are going to be good buds. I'm actually saying that. They're going to be annoying and want a bit of an unfair alliance term. Oh, come on. Make it more possible. Really? Oh, that's so annoying. Um, I don't want to have to give you that much for an alliance. Give you a book. Let's give you a book. <laughs> Quite frankly, I've got about 101 of these things sitting around. There you go. There's another one. Right. Um, okay, so that's a military alliance. We don't need to worry about other alliances at the moment because I could just go, in theory, courses, oh no, um, make deal, joint war. Yeah, so we can do wars with them. That's fine. Okay, machinery is looking good. Um, I'm just going to quickly get mercenaries before to get professional army to save my gold so I can upgrade all my units at once. Um, do I get stirrups first or do we go for we we'll go for pikemen actually? It's probably a better move. I would always recommend going to Embrasia for Victor because once he's in a city you can use any spare gold in order to just purchase in a unit with him and he starts with a promotion. It's a really significant upgrade actually that you don't realize how much it is um, until you sort of you go to war without those initial upgrades like just having that initial upgrade on a swordsman means that it starts with what like all of the defenses against ranged units or all of the battle cry promotion you know just all that sort of stuff really makes a big difference okay um let's go for armory never feel bad about getting in the buildings that produce or get production we've got a huge army here we're just waiting to upgrade it and i was like doing this it's like yes you're a lovely city but i'm just gonna go koplonk there's a temple and koplonk there's a girdawa and now suddenly you are an amazing city you're welcome here we go pikemen once we've got pikemen melee strength 41 units we should be pretty good to charge i reckon three turns off mercenaries as well once we get that professional army comes in we can upgrade all the units and off we go norway still hasn't built walls they will regret doing that. I mean, not that it matters, because at the moment, if they did have walls, uh, all I'd do is build siege towers in three turns. So, I mean, really, it's not the end of the world. It's still a strange one. Should we get an industrial zone going in here? You know what, I think I need at least one industrial zone. Oh, 11 pop. I could do better than 11 pop, I think. So a quick couple of notes while we're waiting to tick up towards um, military tactics and then through to stirrups and gunpowder to get those powerful musketmen in. We've got the nighter, but we need to think about, generally speaking, the wider ranging implications of this game and what we should be doing, really, in terms of how we're going to get that domination crusading victory. The religion base we've got going with 120 faith per turn and all the food that comes from that is really good. That side of things, I'm actually pretty impressed with and I don't need to worry about but if you'll have seen any of my domination guides before you'll know that I have a kind of like a four point ordering system when it comes to how armies work in this game. The most important thing is nukes. If you've got the most nukes in the game you're going to win a domination victory. It's that simple. Nukes are the most powerful thing. After that it's air force. If you've got the strongest air force you're going to win. Bombers and fighters are just the best things in the game but they don't appear until way down into uh, advanced flight so you know we've got until the atomic era before we get to those next up is navy navy we cannot neglect it doesn't matter what armed force you have they are the weakest you could have the most ridiculous armed force in the world but if i need to go and take over someone and they've got a navy like for instance if i'm attacking norway and they've got frigates just lined up off the coast pelting me there's nothing i can do about it Having a navy is way stronger than having a military, and I can't neglect my navy. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to try to beeline what is the best wonder in the game. Uh, well, debatably. Venetian Arsenal. This thing, receive a second naval unit every time you train a naval unit. It's brilliant. As soon as you built this, you get two boats for the price of one. And if you combine that with um, the policy card, which I will be getting soon which is uh press gangs 100 percent production towards naval units you can just get frigates and frigates and frigates for days it is the best and it will help you basically raise the largest navy in the world in order to do it it must be built uh, on the coast and it must be adjacent to an industrial zone so whenever i do choose to build my industrial zone and i do need one in every city 
Um, you can see here the industrial zone in Moscow is being built here. The Venetian arsenal needs to be on the coast next to it. So actually I've got a pretty good spot for it there. I also need to not neglect harbors. Um, so if you think about it, we've got a couple of, well, basically I need a harbor in every city because this is, it's just leaving food on the table. I mean, even St. Petersburg has got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten coast tiles that are all within range of working distance. So if unless I've got a lighthouse, I'm, I'm kind of, a, I'm leaving food on the table really. Um, yeah, so definitely worth it. So if we've got a holy site, we've got a harbor and we've got an industrial zone, that's three districts. Once I've got those, then I can think about putting other districts in like, I can't ignore theater squares. I've got so many writers wandering around. I need to kind of pop those down when I can. It's kind of free culture, makes sense. But at the moment, for now, I'm focusing on army because we do need to make sure that we've got um, a bit of conquest going on. Part of the way that this crusading game works is by keeping a little bit of momentum. And if I don't start taking over Norway, I'm going to lose that momentum pretty quickly. There's professional army. We've got holy site. We've got builders. That is all lovely. Now we can have a think about upgrading archers. Crossbows, 125 gold. That is a lot of gold. So we need to, we need a lot more gold than that. Our religion is only getting us so much. So we'll go to an ally like Coupe and we've got 82 diplomatic favor. Quite frankly, it doesn't matter what votes go through. I don't care. I would rather have the gold. So if I'm, what will they give me? They'll give me that. That's pretty good. 14 gold per turn, 173 up front. That is enough to be really considering, well, I can just basically upgrade all my crossbows. I'm not going to upgrade them now though. I'm just going to wait until I basically can upgrade everything because as soon as I upgrade an archer, it's going to increase the maintenance cost for my units. The other thing I'm going to be thinking of now that I've upgraded my religion um, is that I'm saving my faith for unlocking Moshka, which I should do pretty quickly with medieval fairs and guilds. I'll do those quickly. Let's just boost this one, build two markets, medieval, but none of these I'm likely to boost. But if I can get two governors in, um, actually no, I need more than two, don't I? I need all the way down to patron saint, but I can start producing apostles with two promotions, not one. And I can start to spread my religion pretty aggressively. Seeing as there's a Maori missionary here, I need to start taking the missionaries on and making sure my religion is unopposed. Oh, the letters in the game. Okay, basically, if the letter is in the game and you're playing a crusade game, you just need to focus on them. They are the most important thing. Being able to buy encampment district buildings with faith and city center buildings, it is just insane. Like that is, there's no question to it. That is the most important thing we can be doing right now. So our first envoy counts as two. Uh, send a trade route to the letter, which is over there. It may be possible, but it's a little far away, so probably not quite yet. There is Valletta. We're just going to have a quick tour of my units. Oh, lovely, we got that one. Oh, we've discovered a load of stuff, actually. Okay, the Maori are over there, but also over there. Um, the Congo have got some decent lands together. There's Jerusalem. Jerusalem is interesting. Um, being able to exert my holy sites spread my religion around. Not the biggest bonus in the world, I'd rather have the letter, but still a very useful one. Let's just see if there's anything else we can do. Like, yeah, building ancient walls with faith. Why not? Uh, building an armory. It's a bit more production. I think this is, this is the sort of thing. There we go. Right, so we just need to keep an eye on that, actually. It means actually getting an encampment up in my cities is not a bad move. Although this city really because it's so on the coast and it's got so many things around it, a harbour would be really handy, although we're just going to get a builder going quickly. Um, yeah, we've got serfdom still. I want to be able to upgrade all of these boat units. Tamir is the last person. How is she doing? She's all the way over here. I think she's doing pretty good, actually. So I've got 21 techs. Congo is on 26. We are all still relevant, all still in the game. Always be very careful with harbour placement. Harbours are really important to place properly because that's where your boats are going to get sort of put. So if I put an arbor down here in my plus three, the boats are just going to go into this sort of frozen field where they can't actually leave. And I want my boats to be in the middle of the map. So we want to put them over, over in this direction. So I think I'm going to just spot it. Ooh. There's lots of wonders actually that might be useful later in the game. So maybe I'll put it here. Should I put it here? Um, I think I'll put it there. 
yeah, why not? Okay, Georgia is buying big when it comes to diplomatic favor. That is pretty good. How much will you give me just for all of your god they get? Right, that'll do. So, I think we're gonna we're gonna dive in with what we've got. Uh, I want to strike Norway whilst the iron is hot. I've got walls up in all of my cities. We need to make sure that we've got a good ranged attack by putting at least one crossbowman in. So now I've all of my cities have crossbow defense. Um, we are going to start to move everybody forward a little bit um, and sort of start taking the cities one by one. But our spearmen are going to be pikemen because those are really important upgrades for us. Uh, we need at least a couple of crossbows as well. You can see I just need five gold, typically. So if I make deal and give you this one, six gold, that'll do. Lovely. Uh, it means I can effectively... Oh, actually, no, I'd rather have another pikeman. I've got four melee units now. I think I'd rather have a crossbow. So we'll just upgrade you. Okay, wonderful. Um, I'm also going to just denounce them no there's no point actually it's going to be a surprise war in order to get the diplomatic issue out of the way we're just going to declare war on them immediately and i'm going to go to coupe and say hey do you want to join in oh yeah one gold per turn and he'll join in okay great so we've got him involved now we basically need to go through everyone else and see who we can get in on this war okay so tamir is not going to join if i ask hungry Nope, they don't want to do it either. The Congo, join ongoing war. Uh, they want a little bit of stuff to join in. All right, well, what do you want? Give you some nitre? Are you gonna want to take that? Oh, they will take a bit of that. I can give you a book. I'll give you a book. I'm gonna end up taking my book back. And again, quite honestly, I've got spares. So <laughs> that's fine. Okay, so now Hungary is at war with two people, the Congo and Coupe. Hopefully Coupe will keep the naval units at bay whilst I attack everything on the ground. So I know Norway have 360 military strength, but I also know that it's likely that most of that strength will be in boat form. So we just need to make sure that we have the boats covered. I've got a lot of defensive strength right now. In fact, actually, is it worth getting medieval walls out of castles? Mm, Renaissance walls, I could just buy them with faith, but no, I think I'd rather have gunpowder I think um, let's just get the swordsman in you can see I've got lots and lots of oh they've got um, uh, pikemen as well uh, remember crusade crusade is the most important thing that we're doing combat units gain 10 combat strength in the borders of foreign cities that follow the religion so I need to make sure that at all times if I can help it my troops are stood in enemy territory not in neutral territory but enemy territory and I don't want to take over cities until the last possible moment, until all of the troops have been killed. Because if I don't wait, then effectively I start going to war with, um, you know, I take over a city, like I'd flip Hamar, and then I'd be fighting all the units and I would have lost the 10 combat strength because it's no longer enemy territory. So it's important that I wait until we basically have won the war before we advance. God, I've got loads of troops. None of them are quite upgraded yet, but that's fine. We can do this. Uh, Moscow has built itself an industrial zone as well let's also get another harbor there's another plus five harbor here so we've got two harbors and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to switch over to building boats and we're going to just try and chuck out some boats to keep norway at bay actually one thing i'm going to do quickly is just get an apostle in to start an inquisition inquisitors are really really useful when you're taking over cities now in this case everybody follows crusading cow and that's not a problem but if you're taking over cities and they don't follow crusading cow then what you can do is just follow along after your army with all of the inquisitors and basically just take everything over um swordsman i'm just gonna actually what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna attack in a very norway-esque way here and i'm going to try and see if i can plunder everything we're gonna actually just move our, our sort of uh skills over a little bit make sure we've got some good plundering as an option About 10 turns until the next era already. God, this era has flown by. So we want to generate fewer grievances and I want my crusading cow to be stronger. But quite frankly, the world stage is not something we're really caring about at the moment. Oh, Hungary gets more grievances. It's actually quite useful. Um, okay, so this crossbowman, so again, this is one of those clever little things. If I move you to this tile, now I'm in enemy territory and I've got the 
Uh, 40 base strength, 5 military alliance, and 10 crusade belief. So I'm 15 above where I should be. So I do 59 damage in one strike. Um, unfortunately, the pikeman isn't going to get the same bonus. But that is a pretty good era score. You can see I've got lots of era score coming in now. Move the crossbow into the territory. Fire over the top. Again, both of my great generals have got victories now, so that's good for them. In fact, I'm just going to leave all my little archers and stuff at the back for now. Let's just attack with my better units. I don't want to rush in unnecessarily. Oh, under siege because of Pres uh, Valletta's galley. That is cute. I don't think that's going to last very long. Now, we've got 44 science per turn coming in, and this pillage is worth an absolute whopping 88. So that is stirrups done immediately and we can boost towards gunpowder so this is really good this is a proper norway sort of pillaging war and okay actually no unfortunately the koki mounds only give faith rather than anything else that's not too good always remember to use your great generals both great generals by the way i bought with faith i haven't actually earned any myself although actually we're going to earn one ourselves this is pretty good but always remember they have a two tile radius and you want to keep all of your army involved so i've got one here one here both of them are classical and medieval i believe classical and medieval yeah so that is essentially everything up to and including uh pikemen swordsmen knights but not muskets that's renaissance remember to do all the pillaging you can because that's just one builder will fix all of that but it's 180 gold which suddenly means i can go bonk bonk so one plunder and i've got two more crossbows that's how we're going to win this war, just endlessly assaulting. Now, Hamir, I think, is actually going to fall very, very easily. Just continue plundering. That's another two turns off my gunpowder. In you get here. We're going to plunder this campus at the same time. That one had a library. This one doesn't. So there's a little bit of a discrepancy there. But at the me, really, I haven't actually found any of Norway's troops, really. No one's really kind of here to fight me. Very strange, this war. I think it is literally, they just have boats and nothing else. Very odd. I'm going to move back to St. Petersburg, actually. I want all the production in the capital. It's got 48 production at the moment, but it could be better. Just building a lighthouse, then we'll get a workshop. You can see nobody's really getting great engineers at the moment. I will take advantage of that very much. And while the city's on 33 strength, because they've just moved all the units out, this is when I'm going to get my attacks in. I mean, look. 15 extra strength great general and crusade belief that is nuts so hamir actually could get taken pretty quickly i'm just going to wait so i can take two or three of the cities in one big go that's going to make a huge difference to um basically the loyalty pressure make sure i can actually keep all of these cities uh you move to there you move upwards okay everyone's just moving upwards a little bit let's just flick over everything that we've got professional army is actually really useful um i mean yield pillaging would be a good good thing to switch to for now but actually you know i've got more stuff I'd, I'd rather upgrade it quicker i think at the moment there's no right answer here pillage lovely plundering trade routes plundering everything i believe that actually is i can move you to there and you to there i've actually upgraded everything so you know what screw it i can actually now switch to raid 50 percent extra yields when pillaging is an amazing bonus because that's on science that's on culture that's on gold it all is a lovely okay that is gunpowder we actually have almost entirely surrounded already uh norway this is an amazing amazing assault at the moment um in fact actually i can bring you to there can't attack over the top that's really annoying Nidoros and this, this forest are just sort of causing a bit of an issue for me but we've got all the other crossbows are moving in and around now actually this pikeman okay it's gonna just have to be this one so this city is ready to take uh, I'm just keeping an eye on coupe actually I, they've got units everywhere and I just don't trust the fact that they would like not just skulk in and take it actually so you know what, I will take this city for now. So this is my first crusade. Lovely, that is a good keep for me. You can see that in terms of districts, it has got a campus, which I've pillaged, but that's okay. That'll get put back together very quickly. It's 
got a monument, granary, all of this stuff. Um, in terms of things that I've pillaged, nothing's really that bad. So I'd rather get in the granary, the watermill and the monument to be fixed first and then the campus. So we'll just let it, let it do all that stuff. So you can see the crossbow has lost the crusade now because I own the city. It's still good enough to take out uh, embarked units so I can't really complain about that one too much. But yeah, good, good assault so far. In fact, actually making sure that my great generals are being used to keep the movement up is going to be one from basically most of the battle here. Um, let's move you to there and then get you to shoot and then I think we should be able to take Nidoros. Yep, keep that city and then we'll go shoot and take on this one and then that's that city done. So within two turns we've taken over all of these cities and we've got a load of era score doing that. Four turns we need six era score to get into a golden age. Um, I reckon we can probably do that. We'll adopt a government. That'll be a good step for us. You can see actually taking over these cities, I've now got 20% modifier from having the warlords thrown up. So St. Petersburg now has 60 production. It's only turned, it's, it's 560 AD. It's nuts how much production we've got. I could build the Appenanda, the Hanging Gardens in four turns. Actually, that Hanging Gardens in four turns would give me the Golden Age, I believe. But I don't know if I want to do that. Actually, the diplomatic quarter might be a better move for me. Um, I could do it. Oh, I don't know. There's a lot of things to do here. On anti-cavalry units, I always like to go down the right-hand side of the tree because for 10 melee unit strength, defending 10 melee unit strength, choke points, this makes them almost unbeatable against regular melee units, whereas they already have a bonus against cavalry. Again, it's all about, and I, I, I proclaim this as loudly as I can, as, as, as long as I can, this game is all about rounding out your weaknesses rather than focusing on your strengths. You want to be able to have a sieve that basically does everything well rather than some things brilliantly and some things not brilliantly. I, I genuinely believe it'll it'll get you in longer, longer into the game. Oh, Georgia doesn't like me. Oh, that's a shame, isn't it? Total shame, that. Okay, right. We're going to go against the military emergency because it goes against my controlled way of playing this game, but it did pass. Who's gone for it? Harold and Hungary. Hungary is now at war with me. Okay, that is interesting because Hungary actually have um, the religion we don't like. So if we find any of the Catholicism uh, missionaries or apostles, we can just kill them now, which is wonderful. Oh, look. Uh, Jerusalem has been attacking. Oh, that's um, the Congo's ally. So Jerusalem may end up taking one of Norway's cities, which is hilarious. But Congo has now been brought into a war with Hungary, so they'll keep them at bay. I'm not worried about Hungary rocking up with any units. No, it's okay for us. What's that? Government Plaza. Oh, that'll be good to pillage. Oh, and the Oracle's there as well. So many things that are good to pillage. So switching government to a monarchy. I'm not going to keep a monarchy for too long. But I'm going to take advantage of the era score and I'm also going to take advantage of the military policy slots. So there's professional army, there is raid, let's go for retinues as well. We've got newly trained builders are still the best thing in the game, I love it, it's brilliant. And for wildcard policies, shall we go for... what should we go for? I think actually holy sites, let's keep the faith nice and high. We've got loads of growth, oh no, Republican Legacy is way better to have. Republican Legacy, always have Republican Legacy, but extra one housing and one um, amenity in all cities pretty much is just amazing. And with this upgrade, there is the Musketman, here is the Golden Age because we've utilised a government and also NITA. We are well on our way. For me, the better government is Reformed Church. I like the extra religious strength, I like the extra faith, and I like the extra faith purchasing. Those are all wonderful, wonderful things. I also want to get the Grand Master's Chapel as soon as I can in St. Petersburg, but only when I have the religion benefits that I want to keep. Monarchy's plus one housing level per, per wall. It is quite good. And I am, I've actually got the letter in the game. I'm just trying to think if it's better than unlocking the religious strength and theological combat but I think that's that's more suited to the crusading is the thing and the you know we're gonna wait until theocracy I think it's I think it's the best thing to do here what I'm gonna do though is build the mausoleum just on this tile it's only seven turns 
and double great engineer charges is just insane. It's so good. When you take over a sieve and you steal builders, the first thing you should do with builders is fix everything you've plundered. That is the priority, because you can do that without using builder charges. Once you've done that, then you upgrade everything. But first of all, go and fix things. I do have this cocoa here though, and horses and nitre, all kinds of stuff. I'm gonna go and get the horses first. Whoa, Norway started with the Fountain of Youth as well. Everyone had a wonder except me. Rubbish. Anyway, I'm now losing a diplomatic favor, so I'm gonna sell everything I've got off to Georgia before I lose it all. That's 10 gold per turn. I mean, that's pretty good, but I could probably get a bit of that up front. Uh, four gold per turn. Yeah, you know what that'll do. Just helps me to upgrade my units where I need to. I need to actually just keep an eye on this city and see if we can get a unit up there to take it before the city-states do. Because if the city-state does, the whole thing will get plundered to the ground, which isn't isn't the best. So actually just moving my musketmen in as a priority. It's not a bad idea. We've got the crossbows doing the damage to the city. That is an absolutely fine thing. They're not siege weapons crossbows, but you can see with Crusade and the bonuses I've got and the military alliance and all this stuff makes a big difference. So, as I said, Venetian Arsenal, really important that I get that one. Buttress has been boosted. Dams are really good, but Venetian Arsenal's where I want to be. If I can get that wonder, I will rule the seas. It's that simple. I'm actually going to build the Mahabodhi Temple because it, it is losing one of my really good woods tiles, but the two extra apostles you get is going to just give me a huge crusading religious boost. I'm also, as you can see, Moshka, he's there. He's getting ready to um, to put down all the promotions. As I say, I want to get all the way down to Patron Saint in order for us to get some really good apostles. There's our Golden Age. Norway's in the Dark Age, which is actually really, really useful for us. Monumentality, buying builders with faith, is quite important. Exodius of the Evangelist, though, is always really good. Hicksonk Draconis, plus three population for city settled on a different continent, plus two movement for all naval and embarked units. It's really, really good for when we go to war at sea. But I think for now, we're going to go for Monumentality. Um, I would rather jump on that and we can actually just sort of get a few settlers out maybe, use my faith to get builders more probably, um, because we've got all kinds of stuff that we can be working on right now. And I don't think the builders are particularly expensive from memory. Um, this musketman, oh look, they, they did lose the city. That's really, really funny. Um, the musketman's just going to make its way over and round along with this crossbowman. Um, we've got this pikeman just to do a little bit of uh, pillaging for us. Look at that. 145. It was worth doing that because this would disappear as soon as we take the city over. Yeah, look at that builder. It's only 150. That's pretty good. And in all the cities I've just captured, don't forget I've got the letter as well. So there's the ancient walls done immediately. Um, you can see monument ancient walls there. Yep. Keep the monuments up in all your cities. Just helps to keep things good. We're praying this all into existence. There's a granary and there's some ancient walls. I'm actually making these cities better, I would argue. In fact, everyone just has a builder. Yes, why not? I'm going to get rid of professional army and retinues for now because we've upgraded everything. I'm going to put conscription on and I am going to put chivalry on so we can get some knights going. That would be really good. Republican legacy and serfdom still remain the best options. Otherwise, Guilds means we can now go towards Reformed Church. It's an amazing civic, that one. And, oh, a great general. This guy is a really good one for musketmen because he's Renaissance. Uh, we didn't have one before that point. So uh, we'll just get him to... Uh, actually, hang on. We'll do this in a particular order. If I get this musket to just smack into the city... Okay, that one is now done, which means now I can get my musket to move here. Lovely. I mean, look at this. 55 strength, but 65 with Crusade. It's just like, boodoof. The city's almost dead in one hit. That's powerful. I believe that's Christians and dead. Uh, we'll keep the city. Norway somehow is still in the game. Not entirely sure where they are. Let's just have a look at the loyalty screen, see if we can see any Norwegian cities around coupes in that direction uh nope can't see anything at the moment there's lots of boats in this direction though have norway just got like a random settlement somewhere believe they probably do should we see if norway want peace 
Um, what would they give us? They uh, will just go to peace. Okay. I actually don't know where their other city is, so we'll make peace with them for now. Uh, that will just let me consolidate these cities in and make sure they're all lovely. Look, there's a monument, there's a granary, and there is an ancient walls. Oh, don't say I'm not just the best person to take over these cities. Look, I'm, I'm just improving them at record pace. So there's the mausoleum. It's brilliant wonder, that one. As I say, being able to double pretty much every great engineer coming from my empire. Lovely. Right, Reformed Church is doing pretty good. Unlocks the monastic legacy policy card. I'm always a little suspicious of this because I genuinely don't think it works sometimes. So I'm just going to wait one turn before I build that one. Hanging gardens in two turns is so tempting. Uh, extra housing and plus 15% growth in all cities. That stacks really, really well. Really, really well with my abilities. But I think actually in terms of just getting units out, let's just get a knight out first to charge to the front line. The Congo, the next... The next people for me to attack, I've got to declare war on them. They are my friends. I've got to send a couple of apostles to them first. So it's whether or not I go to Hungary before that point. Um, Coupe is my ally. So these two, not so much. Hungary and Tamir. I think, you know what, just building infrastructure up and just having a whale of a time for a little bit is no bad thing. Oh, the Congo. This is betraying them, but they only have 40 military strength, so I am going to just like... Oh, I can't do that, so I have to promise them that I'm not attacking them. Ah, oh, sometimes you can get around that. Um, okay, Theocracy. We're switching over. That is lovely. We don't need raid anymore because we're not at war. Chivalry, we do need. I think Wars of Religion is really good if you're fighting somebody that has a different religion to you. So... I mean, either you get the plus 10 from Crusade or you get the plus 4 from Wars of Religion. Actually, sometimes you can get both. If the enemy Civ follows somebody else's religion mostly, but then that particular city you're attacking has your religion, you can get plus 14 when you add those two together. It is amazing when that happens. Very rare, but very useful when it does happen. Um, Shivari, I don't need any of this stuff. Let's go instead for... Uh, conscription, just to get a bit of gold in. We've got serfdom, is lovely. Let's get ourselves, um, where is it, holy site adjacency. Uh, I think that's better than getting simultaneum, but I'm going to just get simultaneum in there. Republican legacy is good, but I'm just going to switch it out for a little bit to really focus on getting the faith so I can convert to the Congo. Diplomatic League is doing me okay. Merchant Confederation will get me a little bit more gold for now. Okay, that is a good set of policies all around. 161 faith per turn now. Lovely. The knight is good. Let's get the Grand Master's Chapel afterwards. Converting uh, faith into pure resources is a wonderful thing. Got some of these fishing boats. They're just amazing with the mausoleum there. Look at that. Three food, one gold, one science, one culture, one two faith. I mean, it's not quite Teddy Roosevelt yields that we've had in some of our American playthroughs, but still... That's pretty damn good. Okay, there is the Venetian arsenal. We're diving in on that. As I say, getting a navy. Very, very important step for us. So if we can get Coupe back inside uh, for another military alliance. Oh, he's very expensive on his old alliances, is Coupe. Uh, there's some iron will do. Okay, that is good. That is lovely. Uh, I was thinking, do I, do I go to war with them? But once we've got a navy, then we'll go to war with them. I think for now, it's absolutely fine. We're just, as I say, all of these fish tiles, you can see they are totally out of range of St. Petersburg, but I'm doing them because it gives it housing. It's always worth housing. I've got all the trade, uh, trade routes going into St. Petersburg. 16 population, 58 production. It's a pretty, pretty good city. All of my army, I'm just waiting in this bay. Um, I just need it to kind of be ready to go uh, when we do go to war uh, and be nice and upgraded. We've got nobody that we are actually targeting at the moment, but that's only because we're getting our religion up. We're building a bit of infrastructure. We are doing very well in this game at the moment. We've got the most score by some way because we've just taken over the entirety of Norway. Um, and as I say, once we get the Venetian Arsenal, we should be laughing. Again, this is one of my favorite games to play. It's just like, here is a shrine. Woohoo! Here is a temple. And here is a Gerdua. <laughs> And now you have tons and tons of food and you will be the best city that anyone's ever been. Did you notice that? A lighthouse in 20 turns has now gone to a lighthouse in 9 turns. Even though all I did was put food in. The more food, 
the more production towers you can work whilst the city still grows. This is why Feed the World is better than work ethic. And finally, a very special shout out to Scott Stratton and Major King Kong for all of your help on Patreon, as well as everybody else who likes, subscribes, comments on videos, joins Discord. You guys keep me going. Thank you very much.